Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. In the previous episode we have set up this kind of alien buckish wolf, <laughs> soon to be wolf, which is feeding upon the sheep. One really cool suggestion that I have received is to make a hunger bar or, you know, some hunger value for the wolf so they don't constantly attack the sheep on sight but only when they are hungry. That is definitely something I want to implement and has made it to the list. However, one more important thing I want to take care of today is a proper ore spawnage. So we will take care of that in the tile generation script and I basically want one single location for each ore and they also should of course be a little cluster of copper, coal and iron. Additionally, the individual ores should have some value to them. So once we mine it, this value can actually go down and the vein is able to run out of resources. So this is the basic game of today's episode, let's get right to it. So for testing purposes, I actually want to implement something new within the core object. Let's open that up and we're going to add a key press event or let's say key release and it's going to be the spacebar and as soon as I do that, I want the room to reset. Let's see, is it this icon? Yeah, restart room. This will allow us to regenerate the worlds over and over without actually having to restart the game. We can just hit the space bar. So that is one thing I wanted to implement and also within the tile generation we are going to work with that script anyways so we can open it up. I want to add a little variable that is going to make it even easier on me, namely the randomize thing. What this thing will do is get a different seed every time, because uh, right now, every time we start the game, it's the same thing, no matter the random values, etc. It's always the same thing, because if you know, there's no such thing as randomness in computer language. However, we can have a random seed for the generation and therefore it will be something different every time. So in case you're running into the problem that every time you start the game it's the same thing, then just add that somewhere in your script. Anyways, at the moment we are spawning the ores right here and I would say we are going to get rid of this code entirely. We don't really need that anymore, we're gonna do it differently, more elegantly and much better. So let's think about this first of all. I do want some ore spawn origins. We basically want to distribute the three types of ores around the map randomly and this is what is going to happen right now. I want to do this with a random value that is at least one tile size from each edge of the room away. So we're going to define a spawn region x which is going to be the random number of global dot tile size. So it's a minimum of 32 pixels away from the edge and a maximum of the entire room width minus two times global dot tile size. Maybe we could even go a little bit more extreme. Maybe we don't want it to be spawning so close to the edge. Now we have to do the same thing for the spawn region Y. Oh, this should have been X here, I'm sorry. The Y is going to be the same thing, it's random global dot tile size. However, this time it's going to be plus room height, of course, minus two times global dot tile size. Just like that, that should be good. And now we can actually create an instance of the ore. So let's say the first one is of course the coal. Instance create spawn region x and spawn region y object or coal. Easy as that, we just defined a range where the stuff can spawn and then we spawned it. Now of course this coal ore is not going to be aligned to the grid so we want to do that by saying with object or coal we want to move snap it to the grid. So move snap global dot tile size global dot tile size. Great, so now we've done that thing with the coal, we want to redefine a new set of variables for the copper and for the iron. So I thought we could simply copy this over. Maybe there would be an easier way, maybe we could do a for loop or something like that. But I'm just gonna redefine these variables and I'm going to change this into copper and this one into iron and we should be good. Oh, actually this one I have to change too, of course. Copper and iron. Great, so now that we have that, let's do a quick test. 
So what we should be seeing is some iron right here. That is good. What else do we have? We have some copper, a single one, and then the last one, coal, right here. If I hit the spacebar, the room is going to be regenerated and we should have the iron, copper and coal on different locations. And from the looks of it, that worked out. None of the ores spawned outside of the room and they seem to be distributed more or less evenly. Great, so with that out of the way, let's tend to the actual ore generation. And we're going to do the example with the coal ore first, right? This is going to be quite a bit of code, I think. I haven't thought it entirely through, but I, I know what I want to go for. So the first thing I want to do is, since we only have one single coal ore in the entire room, I can simply address it with the if statement. So if the object or coal, and now everything we write in here is as if we would write it on the object coal itself. So, maybe to begin with, let's define a few variables. I don't know how many we're gonna need, but I know that we're gonna need the global dot tile size a whole lot. So I'm going to shorten it to tile, just for the script. Also, we're going to have a for loop, so I'm going to define the variable i. Now, for the for loop. Uh, basically here we decide how many repetitions of the actual code that we're placing now we want to do. And maybe before I go further with this, let me explain you within the room what I actually want to do. So let's for instance assume the first coal item landed right here. What I want to do now is to define a brush size. So let's say for instance my brush size is going to be something like this. So when my coal spawns, then it will also spawn all of these ores. Then the next thing I want this coal to do is move maybe two or three tiles into a random direction, maybe to the right or to the right up, and let's say it landed right here. So it is going to do the same thing as before, creating all of these objects and increasing the size of the actual coal ore. Then maybe it is going towards the left side for two tiles or so and it's going to do the same thing here as well and creating another shape. Now of course some of the ores are going to overlap but I also have a solution for that. So let me actually get rid of these guys. Good, so with repetitions I mean how many times are we going to relocate the brush in order to draw more of these ores? And I think a uh, for loop is just the best way to do that. So let's say for i equals zero and as long as i is lower than let's say 10, I don't know yet. But for as long as it is lower than 10 in this case, we want to set i plus equal one. And then we can decide what we want to do in this for loop. So everything we do in here is going to be repeated 10 times. What we're going to start with is defining the brush size. And of course we have to do this for all the tiles I just mentioned. So we want to spawn something in the center, towards the right, down direction, then left and up direction. But also we want to spawn it towards the right up direction, towards the right down direction, left down and left up direction. We also want to define the right two times direction, down two times, left two times, and last but not least, up two times. And with uh, all of these tiles, we should have defined our brush size. So for the center bit, it is actually the easiest. Here we simply have to create an instance x, y, object, or co. There we go. But then right here, we have to set up a condition. Namely, I don't want the ores to spawn outside of the room. So we need to limit this here as well. And I'm going to do this with if x plus tile, for instance, for the right direction, is smaller than the room width minus tile. Then and only then I want an instance to be created on the x plus tile, y object or coal. You see, we're checking the tile towards our right side, but at the same time it shouldn't be bigger than the room width minus one tile size. And if that is the case, we want to create the coal ore. Now we can do this for all directions. For instance here, if uh, the Y plus tile is smaller than room height minus tile, then we want an instance to be created on the uh, x, y plus tile object or coal. And of course, spelling correctly. 
The left side is going to be x minus tile. If that is uh, bigger than a tile, then we want the instance to be created. So instance create x minus tile y object or call upwards direction if y minus tile is bigger than tile then we want the instance to be created on the x y minus tile object or call you can see it is quite easy after you've managed the first one now of course for the right up direction we have to check two conditions namely if the x a plus tile is smaller than the room width minus tile but also if the y minus tile is uh, bigger than tile can you see the logic here we're checking the right direction so we want to check the right edge of the room minus the tile size but at the same time we also want to check the upwards direction which is y minus tile and this should of course be bigger than a tile so it doesn't go above the upper edge so now that you know about the basic gist let me quickly finish that and uh, there we go. I think I got all the directions done. Yeah, that is looking about right. Of course, don't forget with the right two times, you should also check the tile that is two tiles away from your current position. However, at the moment, we are doing this basically 10 times. So what is going to happen is we are going to spawn a whole bunch of ores over each other. But let's maybe check it out first of all. You can see 131 coal ores we currently have, but it's actually only 13. But since we've done it so many times, it spawns them over and over again. Which of course is not something we necessarily want. What we want to do is relocate the original ore so that we can paint somewhere else. In order to achieve that, I have to set up a new brush spot. Let's call it that. And I want to do this in a random direction. So let's say the random direction is going to be, you know, just four directions. We can do more if we wanted to. But four directions for now are going to do the trick for me. So we're going to say floor random four. And that will result in a number between zero and three. So now we can use a switch statement in order to check the rand direction. There we go. And in case the direction is zero, then we want... Hmm, let's actually define this. This is the right direction, okay? So if we have zero, then the new brush spot is going to be towards the right, which means we can say x plus equals, for instance, two times tile. Okay, and after that, of course, we want to take a break. And in case it is one, then it uh, is going to be the down direction. So we say y plus equals two times tile. Take a break in case it is two, then it is the left direction, which is x minus equals two times tile. Take a break and then case three, which is the up direction, I guess. Yeah. We want to set y minus equals 2 times tile. And one last break. Beautiful. So we are basically spawning the ores. Then we are changing uh, to a new location. And after that, we are going again to the beginning of this for loop. Therefore, creating a new set of ores, changing the location again, etc, etc. However, at this point, I think what we can do in order to prevent spawning too many ores above each other. I want to delete the original brush, uh, which is the original ore that we spawned. So we can simply say, since we are still within the with statement of the original ore, uh, let's call this delete brush ore. And we're gonna say instance destroy. Simple as that. Uh, destroy. No, destroy, man. There we go. And this will only destroy the original instance. Even though we are using a with statement that is usually addressing all of the coal ore, we initiated this with statement while only one coal ore was available and therefore it's only addressing this single one. Great. Okay. I think we are done with this guy. Let's save this and quickly check out what it did. There we go. So at the moment we have 122 coal ores and we should be seeing... Yeah, look at that. And it didn't go below the lowest tile here, which is also good. Let's regenerate the room and check it out. So this is another patch that could happen. Then what else? Here we have another patch and I just see I made a slight calculation mistake here, but 
you know, that is easily fixed. Yeah, I actually do like the sizes and it seems to behave more or less, you know, randomly and nicely. Just, yeah, like I anticipated. But now, of course, these guys need to have some kind of a value, right? I mean, right now it's just ores. I want them to have a value and also I want them not to be above each other. So we have to eliminate all except one ore if they collide with each other. So in order to achieve that, we are going to create new scripts. I think two scripts are going to do the trick. One is going to be called or values. Give this a nice uh, title or values. This is going to go on the create event of all my ores. Actually, let's delete this or temp script. We don't need that anymore. What I want is to have a look at my call or delete this step event, add a create event, and here we are going to add this call or values. Or just or values, yeah. It's gonna be the same script for all of the or types. Now, since we are already at it and I know what I want to go for, I'm going to create yet another script, which I'm going to call or values draw. And this is obviously going to go on the draw event of the or. There we go. Let's save that bad boy and let's say draw, draw, draw. Here we go. That is going to take the script or values draw. Beautiful. Now we would have to do this for all of the or types, but I'm just going to do it with the call to check things out. Let's check out the or value script first. This is on the create event of the or and it's basically supposed to spawn a, a value. Let's say something between 500 and 1000 ors in one spot. So self or value is going to be a random number that I'm going to floor down down let's say random 500 and once we have that number between 0 and 500 we want to add an additional plus 500 points there we go so this is going to be the value however now we want to check for overlapping ors so let's do that overlapping or is going to be equal to instance place x y object index okay and i'm going to use the object index instead of or call so that we can place this on all of the OR types and it doesn't matter. So now we know how to address the OR that is uh, colliding with our current OR. So we are going to use a WITH statement of the overlapping OR. So everything we write within that WITH statement is going to be on the other OR, not the actual OR we are programming this code in. That means we can do something really, really nice. And this took me a while to figure out. We can actually check for the object ID. Since the both objects are the same instance, they're basically identical. This raises a lot of problems. However, they don't have the same ID. So I can say if the ID of uh, the other object that I'm currently writing the with code for, if that ID is smaller than the other ID, which is the ID of this object where this code is on. It's kind of confusing, but other in this case is addressing our object. But there we go. If that is the case, then I want the value of our current or to be added to the value of the or which we are checking the ID from. Holy cow, this is complicated to explain with limited vocabulary. But basically, if the ID of the colliding object is smaller, then we want our current or value to be added with this colliding object. And after that, we are also going to instance destroy the other instance. And this is the cool thing about it, because one ID is going to be bigger, namely the ID we have this code on. So only one of the two instances that are overlapping is going to be deleted because of the ID. Hopefully you understood that. Anyways, now it's time to have a look into the draw thingy majingy. Right here, I want to set up the draw self, of course. If you don't do that, nothing is going to be drawn at all and you don't see the ores. However, since we have a value to these ores, I also want to be able with the debug window to actually see these values. So uh, let's set a color, um, let's say C white. And we also want to say if the global.debug info equals true, then only then we want to see these ore values. And for that, I want to draw a text. We are actually going to draw a transformed text. This basically means I can scale it down a little bit because otherwise it's going to be too big since we are going to have numbers in the thousands. 
So uh, let's draw it at x, y, and we want to draw the self or value number. And of course we want to scale it down. One is just, you know, the normal font size, and I'm going to scale it down half the size. So 0.5 and 0.5. And then last but not least, you have to set an angle, which I'm just going to set at zero, zero degrees. There we go. That's all we had to do, right? Okay, let's test it out. Okay, this is already looking much better. We have 55 coal ore at the moment, and we should still have, yeah, look at that. We still have our clusters of coal. And also, if we look closely, then you can see that the outside coals, which didn't run as much of a risk of overlapping, do have a lower value to them, and the ones in the center do have a bigger one. Here is a spot with 4,199 pieces. That is absolutely fantastic. Maybe we even set up a number here so we can see the entire global value of coal ores we have at our disposal. Let's reset the room once more just to see that stuff is working out still. Yeah, I really like the size of this vein and I also like how it works out with the numbers. And of course, if we get rid of the debug info, yeah, we also don't see the values anymore, which is great. Awesome, guys. Oh, I'm actually glad this worked out. Now, we will have to prevent the different types of ores from overlapping, but I think I will also give the player an easy way to respawn and regenerate the world so they can kind of decide whether or not they want to go with this. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.